DaVinci Resolve. Which CPU is the best for DaVinci Resolve? Which is the best upgrade path for DaVinci Resolve? Also, what is the best bank for buck CPU for DaVinci Resolve? And should you go with AMD or Intel? All of these questions will be answered in this video. So before we're gonna jump into the analysis and I'll show you everything, I wanna say a few things. First of all, all the links for all the CPUs I'm recommending and some other options will be in the description below. So if you wanna pick up any of these, the links will be in the description. Also, if you wanna check out some of the PC builds and how to build one of these systems, there's few of them available on the channel. Just find the PC build uh, playlist, which I'll link up there as well, so you can check them out. Also, I am basing all this analysis on Puget Systems website or their articles. So if you wanna check out the original articles, you can feel free to check that out in the description as well. But they are absolutely amazing guys who just test loads of these things for creatives. But I'm just making that even shorter for you if you don't have time to read the article and do the research yourself. And lastly, I want to underline all the products or CPUs that will be released this year, like Intel's and AMD's and whoever, Apple's, Macs and things like that. Now, if you want to go that route and what is going to happen in the future and what's going to be, you know, released soon around the corner, then you will never be happy because there's something better always around the corner. Now, I am basing all this on the things that have been released since 2020 or in the year of 2020 which means that all of these will be available at least they're in the store you can buy them straight away and the systems are available so davinci resolve then now a few things about davinci resolve first of all davinci resolve is this awesome program that can utilize not just cpu but also gpu and it also matters whether you have PCIe 4.0 or 3.0 in the graphics card slot. There is actual measurable difference in the DaVinci Resolve when you go with PCIe 4.0 or 3.0. Let me show you this graph over here. As you can see over here, PCIe 4.0 and PC PCIe 3.0 cards. So this is RTX 3090 over here and they're tested. And as you can see, you know, the very dark blue over here is PCIe 4.0. And you can see there is actual measurable difference if you run the card on PCIe 4.0 or 3.0, which just leads me or helps me in the point or in the question of answering the question whether you should go with AMD or Intel. There is currently no Intel platform that supports PCIe 4.0. Most likely the 11th gen is gonna come out and will support that, but who knows when they will be actually available. If you're wondering whether you should go with AMD or Intel, then it's very hard to recommend Intel in this program because there is really nothing going for Intel whether it's Thunderbolt boards or just price to performance ratio, everything seems to be better on AMD. And the Thunderbolt part, there is available a motherboard on AMD system that supports, fully supports Thunderbolt uh, port. So if you wanna pick that up, you can check that in the description as well. I've got a full review of the motherboard on my channel if you wanna check that out. It's called Gigabyte B550 Vision D. Let's start the analysis. On the top left side, you can see some stats of CPUs and their prices. Everything that is the same color is the same platform, which means you can upgrade a bit more. So another reason to go with AMD is that you see everything from the bottom over here to almost to the top is the same platform. Whereas Intel's light blue over here, that's only available for upgrade within its system. And this dark blue is available on the different platform. You can't mix these light blue and dark blue platforms because they're different. These CPUs don't match with each other. And then we have on the top AMD Threadripper, which is completely another world of things. So 8K Media, I'm just going to show them very quickly and then we're going to actually do the main analysis on the uh, overall score. But just in case if you use any of these parts of DaVinci Resolve a bit more, it's helpful for you to see what is on the top and what is on the bottom. So feel free to like pause it or check out the stats over here if you want to later come back and configure or like figure out exactly or if you're working a lot on 8K or 4K, just come back to this part of the video and then you can see uh, these stats over here. We have fusion scores. Fusion, you see a lot of the Ryzen and Threadripper processors before much more similarly than on the 8K. As you can see, the Threadrippers on the 8K are absolutely, you know, much more faster than on the fusion part over here. And then let's have a look at 4K media, the same over here. 
here. The Threadripper processors are absolutely much better than anything else over here. There's a big gap between the top of the Ryzen and Intel system to a Threadripper system. But now the extended overall score, which we're going to base this analysis on. On the bottom over here, I've also included like the Ryzen 5000 series versus 3000 series uh, process gain. Like how much is the gain over here? As you can see, it's very interesting because on the bottom end, we're gaining roughly around 6%. And that is compared to the 3600 XT over here. And um, the thing is between the 3600 XT and 3600X, there is not that much of a difference maybe few percent difference so if you want to get any of the cards that have are just x variants not xt variants on the ryzen um, system sorry not cards cpus then go with you know the x variants because there's not that much of a difference between 5000 and 3000 series look six percent there's four percent over here eight percent that is the biggest on ryzen 9 <laughs> future bends made actually a mistake over here look the reichs and reichs and processors over here uh, all of them <laughs> Uh, that's quite funny. And then on the top of the Ryzen 9s, there's only 2% game, which means not really worth it over the $50 in my opinion because the actual previous gen is even cheaper so it's not $50 difference it's less than or more than $50 a difference so now let's have a look at some of the analysis and we're going to start from the bottom over here and then we're going to make our way to the top on the bottom over here, we have the Ryzen 3600 XD 6 core, and you can see it's quite a bit better than our 10600K. And then there is like a slow increase of things. Look all the way to kind of here, uh, which is Rise, uh, Intel's 14 core processor. There's maybe 10% difference between the, the 3600 XD to uh, the 14 core Intel's processor, which is look more than two times the price. But then there is a much cheaper options over here, like the 5800X, which outperforms almost all of the Intel's um, X processors. As you can see, even the 18 core, basically they perform exactly the same. Two points difference, that is less than 1% difference you're not going to notice that but they are essentially performing the same now i would not go with the ryzen 5800 xd because look at this their performance is only 8.5 percent better than the 5600x which is down here and i think that is not worth the 150 dollars in terms of the increase because you're hardly going to see it in, in order to really see a difference in the performance you want to go a bit more than 10 percent you know 10 percent you're going to see okay yeah i think this is better now also the ryzen 5800x over here that runs really hot that processor there's it's almost like something's wrong with the engineering with it it's not really wrong with it but they just engineered to run very hot to get the performance out of it so it's much more prone to uh, thermal throttle so i would not go with this processor and then you can see there's a bit of a jump from the 12 core like i could put a line in between over here and then you could see that uh, there's a line that everything from 3900 XD or 3900X is better than anything Intel offers. Even the 5800X is actually better than, uh, kind of on par with it, but this is now better. Let's have a look. So these processors here between the Ryzen 9s, 5000 and 5950X and 3950X, they perform very, very similarly as you can see over here. The, the graphs aren't increasing that much, but there is a big jump between the 5950X and our Threadripper 24 core processor that is roughly around 11 percent and you're paying 600 dollars more for that as well but then the very best processor on ryzen or this davinci resolve is the threadripper 32 core not even 64 core but 32 core and the difference is only 4.5 percent and it costs extra 600 dollars compared to the ryzen 24 core so if you want to go like the best processor possible it is the ryzen 32 core ryzen threadripper 3970x i'll leave it in the description for the three people who want to get it but in terms of the top top of the charge the best cpu for davinci resolve and that is like the best bank for buck pro cpu i would say is the 24 core because look the 24 core equals with the 64 core and the another 600 dollars for extra 4.5 percent to me i personally can't justify that and i think a lot of people can't either but there are people who 
do justify it, so they should go with 32 core. But then, like, if you want the best without actually breaking the bank, I would go with 24 core. You're not gonna see the difference really between 32 and 24 core. There's like this little anal analysis. Now I wanna put up this conclusion over here to show you actually where should you start with and then what would be the upgrade option and what would be the best bang for buck option now the start of this would be actually even second gen or any third gen ryzen processor you can really get your hands on because even the 3600 xt and 2700x 3700x they be they will perform very well in here and depends on the pricing and the availability you should go with any of these processors because later on you can see the upgrade path is very nice you can upgrade later on to a pretty better processor if the price comes down there so if you Feel free to check it out and as you can see for the price we're sitting somewhere around here not far off from anything that intel offers so definitely worth this over there in my opinion especially if you go with 3700x or 3800x or 3800x d processors you'll see very good performance but in terms of like 5000 series processors i would go with 5600x as the beginning processor because if you do anything else like any photo editing or just anything else on your system the single core performance of that processor will, you'll see a big significant leap or faster performance compared to any of the third gen Ryzen pro performances because the single core performance is roughly around 19% better so that is quite a bit the next jump up over here the second over here is what i would go call the sweet spot of the best bang for buck cpu for davinci resolve the other programs i've covered them so feel free to check them out on the channel but this 3900x and this is not 3900 xt because the 3900 xt is usually a little bit more expensive than the 3900x and it doesn't have a cooler whereas the 3900x comes with a cooler very adequate quill cooler which means for the same price your cooler is actually built into or comes within the price and it is at least 12 percent better when compared to um you know 5600x or other processors now if you compare to like 2700x or 3600x or 3600x the 3700x that percentage could be up to 20 percent or even more better and it is the sweet spot where you get a lot of performance increase and the price increase is kind of justifiable because of the gain you're getting over the money you're spending. So that is like the sweet spot, 3900X. And it costs like $499 MSRP. You can get it probably a little bit cheaper now. So feel free to check it out in the links below. And then the next stop you would think is the 5900X over here. And that is over here. Look at that, that gap over here is roughly between eight to 10%, depending if you go in with 3900X or 3900XD, which is quite a bit of an increase. So if you want to upgrade, I would upgrade to 5900X. But I also want to mention that keep an eye on the 3950X, this 16 core over here, because look at that. That previous gen 16 core and the new 5000 series 16 core, there's only 2% difference in the performance, but the price difference can be quite a bit, especially now when the 5000 series is out of stock, that third gen Ryzen, if you just want pure performance on DaVinci Resolve, that 16 core will run you absolutely amazingly. And you could even sometimes get it cheaper than the 5900 x if you're doing anything else apart from the davinci resolve as well as well i would still go with 5900x because of the single core performance that is absolutely amazing on after effects you know any of the photo editing softwares that's what they like to use so it's got a lot of cores and a very good single core performance that's why the 5900x is quite a bit in a bit of an upgrade between the 3900x and then from there on the last stop over here would be in my case uh 3960x that is the threadripper system 24 core and that processor is, is another league just the processor on its own cost 1399 which is quite a bit so now that would be kind of my upgrade path or just what i would go for and hopefully you know this will help you as well decide whether you want to go for and where your budget lies and what will be the best processor in your budget hopefully i answered all the questions what is the best cpu to get for davinci resolve so let me know if i did in the comment section below remember if you want to pick out any of these uh, cpus they will be linked below as well as other programs that have 
have been covered or break broken down similar analysis on them so feel free to check them out on the channel thank you very much guys for watching hit the like button if you found this video helpful subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you very soon thanks for watching bye bye